We are going to finish our walk through Old Madrid in the East Plaza, called this way because it is located in front of the eastern facade of the Royal Palace. The following sentence can be read on the floor of the entrance to the plaza on Lepanto Street. This plaza was created by order of Joseph I, the King of Plazas, in 1809, after the demolition of several buildings of the Royal Palace. Narciso Pascual y Colomer was its architect. Joseph Bonaparte's idea was to communicate the area of the palace with the door of the sun. But a few years later, King Ferdinand VII, with the objective of building a new opera house, modified the project and gave it a new impetus. The works concluded in the middle of the 19th century, with the configuration of streets and buildings that we know today. The East Plaza houses gardens divided into three parts. Gardens of Cape Noel in the north of the plaza, it is the area that you see on the right of the photo, Lepanto Gardens to the south, it is the area on the left, and the Gardens of the East in the central parts arranged in the form of a grid and in whose central avenue stands the equestrian statue of Philip IV. This statue is the best equestrian sculpture in Madrid. Made in bronze, it represents the monarch on horseback in a difficult composition by the Florentine Pietro Tacca. Tacca made the sculpture following a design by Velázquez and with the scientific advice of Galileo Galilei to ensure its stability. It was the first statue in the world supported on the two hind legs of the horse and concealed on the tail. In the plaza, there is a sculpture collection of 20 Spanish kings. Five are Visigoth kings and the other 15 are monarchs of the first Christian kingdoms of the Reconquest. The group of statues are a part of a series dedicated to all the monarchs of Spain, commissioned during the reign of Ferdinand VI to decorate the royal palace. At first, the idea was for the sculptures to adorn the upper cornice of the palace. However, after placing some of them on top of the building, it was feared that the roof would not support their weight. So they were finally distributed to different parts of Madrid and other Spanish cities. And on the other side of the plaza, in front of the Royal Palace, we see the Madrid Opera, that is, the Royal Theater. It was built on the site where the Caños de Peral Theater stood, in the 18th century. The Royal Theatre was located in place of the former Comedy Corral. The first stone was laid on April 23, 1818, with Ferdinand VII reigning, but it was not inaugurated until November 19, 1850, when the Queen was already his daughter, Elizabeth II. The building was one of the main European theatres for 75 years but a collapse in 1925 caused it to be closed for 41 years. A historical curiosity that few people know is that a few years before its opening, specifically in 1841, the theater served as the parliamentary seat for the deputies while the courts were being built. It is a neoclassical building. It was commissioned to the senior architect of the villa, Antonio López Aguado. It has the capacity for about 1,750 spectators. The Royal Theatre has 22 floors, eight of which are underground, which means that the entire Telefónica building, which is in Gran Vía, would fit inside. Here we conclude the tour. I hope you have enjoyed it, and I encourage you to get to know all these beautiful corners of Madrid in situ. 